There he is. <laughs> What's going on, pal? What are you doing? Uh, you know, I was just, I, I mean, I was watching the news. I was waiting on you. Wasn't doing. Oh, he was waiting on me. Well, you said you needed 10 minutes to charge your batteries. I was something. charging my headphones. Well, so that I could, you know. So I was waiting on you. What are you giving me the business for? Well, don't make it sound like, you know, like I, I had you waiting all day. That's what you no. made it sound like. <laughs> I, don't, I think that's your own guilty conscience here in that. I in no way applied that, my friend. No, no way. Or, or you just have all day to wait, so you. Oh, <laughs> oh we're getting it. We're getting it in early and often, aren't we? Hey, <laughs> boom! Oh, we're just gonna yeah. fucking, you know, stick a thumb in my fucking kidney, aren't we? All right, I see well, how it is. You know, I mean, look, just don't get offended. That's all. <laughs> I listen. Compared to some people in our little group, it's impossible <laughs> to <laughs> set that bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh for the occasional listener that might be in our thread uh right. he uh he really uh, uh oh, fuck it uh uh marco made a joke about him in the uh in the thread and he t <laughs> I, okay so i saw it and i laughed immediately when he made the mention and then i was just sitting there staring at the phone waiting for the reply that i knew was going to come because i knew blake was going to not find it funny even though i laughed out loud when i read it half because it was funny and half because i knew what blake's reaction was going to be which made it more right. funny and i th and i think i even wrote no that's funny <laughs> When he when he he replied, so I don't remember what he said. He said like, "Oh, mm. that's absolutely not funny," or something like. And I'm like, "No, that was, that was pretty funny." Oh, so what do you got? I feel like you got stuff today. I feel like you're coming to the table with some things. Is that is? Are you hoping that because you got nothing? No, I didn't say that. Right, I just, just I feel like you had something to tell me. Well, I mean, I don't have no. I don't have any like hot news, but. Uh, I did want to revisit something that happened on Facebook, which was that yeah. uh, we we are celebrating our eight year anniversary, right? Of the uh, Mario Steel Horse video, where you uh, you were dressed up as uh, Mario from uh, the video games, and right. uh, you uh, we did this thing when we were doing a cosplay wrestling at the comic book convention, where uh, I think that weekend. In like the real wrestling world, somewhere on the independent scene, some soft shell. Right, here, here's what happened. Okay. I'll tell you what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the independent scene, it's in Florida, it happened. There was a oh. guy, uh, what? I said, of course, in Florida. Where else would it? Right, for, how to be in Florida, right? Everything right. always in Florida. So there was a guy, and he, his name, his wrestling name was Steel, was uh, Steel Horse, was his wrestling name. Right. And he, there was a wrestling match, and someone... In the in wrestling business, they call it stiff. They stiff someone. That means you hit them a little too hard, a little too real. Uh, you know, you, you give them, and, and sometimes that's needed in certain situations. Maybe like when, like, uh, let's say someone pisses you off. Well, you can right? you can like send them a message that way. Right. I would say yes. Send them a message is a good good example. Or you can, yeah. or some guys, if it's agreed upon by both parties, want to make the match really real. They will work. They will decide between the two of them to work stiff, which means kind of like you know, uh, connect a little harder than they would someone with you know another guy that you know like this guy. Right, right. So like, yeah, yeah I, I think sending a message is the best thing to call yeah, it. Right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think yeah. That's what it is. Right, right. Now, or sometimes you know, there's been a couple occasions you can go on YouTube and find it where I just didn't like someone, so I intentionally. Stiffed oh yeah, you've uh, you've right. you've you've out of the blue just decided to to do that on occasion. Right, because not like somebody. Yeah. Right. So, anyway, this guy got he got stiffed in the match, and he he was so upset by being stiffed that he called the police <laughs> on the other wrestler that he had the match with. Now, so you're in a wrestling match. Now, sometimes, right, go ahead. but yeah. sometimes. I'm just gonna throw one other scenario out. Sometimes you're yeah. testing the other person, and you throw 100%. a stiff you throw a stiff shot to either see how they re react to it, like if they crumble or or get upset, or if they return it in kind. You know, you, this guy's all right. You know, like you know. Either way, if he yes. if he doesn't say anything and just takes it, or if he uh, stiffs you back and you go, okay, we're 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 on the same page here. Uh, right. But, but you're testing them to see that they're not like. 
this other scenario where he calls the cops on you. Right. Right. And I'll tell you a story about that after this. So, uh, so anyway, the guy gets upset after the match. The match is over. He goes in the locker room and he calls the police. Like he called the police on the other guy he was wrestling. It's that's that's just you don't do that. It's unheard of. It's, I mean, that's like taking a hard foul in an NBA game and then going to call the police. Right. Like, right. Like that. Or getting you get you get leveled on the football field, then you go to call the police. Like you don't do that. Right. So he does it. Well, the police come. You know, I I don't I don't remember exactly what happened, but. The wrath that the, the guy never wrestled again because the next day online, everybody was just giving him shit on on Facebook about it. I mean, it was, it was it's embarrassing. I I would say like you know yeah right. What would you say like for oh, the yeah. business for the the guy right. like right he buried but, he buried himself. But this was like a a self correcting problem. It just took a very public route. If you right. stiffs if you work st- and it's a lot it happens a lot early when you go to like some of these wrestling schools. Back in the right. day, now it's a little more like a, a nerf nerf wrapped room. But uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. you would you would you would work stiff with guys to weed out the ones that aren't cut out for the business. And so sometimes yes. when you're in the ring with younger guys, you do that too to weed out the weak. And this just went that extra step where he called the cops, and then the internet weeded him out. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Because he never wrestled again. But- right. Yeah, so that's what what happened. Now, Comic Con. I'm dressed as Super Mario. Well, it happened. We have it happened that weekend. It happened that right, weekend. Same weekend. Right, so it was buzzing. Like oh, like right. we were like it was like a three day stretch, and like after after the first day, everyone was buzzing about this steel horse thing. Right. Yeah. Right. And and here we were in Miami, right? mm-hmm. I believe it was, mm-hmm. and we were doing SuperCon. Now SuperCon just so everybody is a big comic convention, and and uh, there was wrestling. And the wrestling drew. I wanted to draw. I don't even know. I mean, depending, uh, you know, w- over the course of when we did it with this convention, right. the convention grew a lot. So I think when we started, we had rooms on the busiest nights of like a thousand, and probably by the end, I was. I think we filled the rooms to like two thousand or twenty five hundred. Right. You know, watching wrestling, and we're dressed as everybody's dressed as characters. So it's cosplay wrestling, and, and I'm Super Mario because that was always. I, I think Ben, you gave me that, right? Didn't you give me Super? You told me to be Super Mario. I think like, I, this is your brainchild. Yeah, it's it, that's a long, convoluted story where like right. the guy that was running it was going to jail, and so he transitioned it before he went to jail to you and me running it. Like we right. were running it together that first year, and right. and we, I think we were just talking about it, and, and we just decided that's what you were going to be. Um, right. But Which like every like every character, every character is based off either comic books or right. video games or or those kinds of genres of movies, you know, Comic Con type stuff, fantasy, dungeons, yeah. you know, all Star Wars, all that kind of shit. So yeah. So you right. were yeah so, you were Mario. Right, I was Mario, and then we decided, hey, this 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 storyline's hot right now. We're gonna do our own steel horsing, but with Mar me as Super Mario. Uh, and at the time, I was that that little feud that year was against uh, what do you call those guys from they're, Clockwork Orange? Yeah, they were uh, they're called the Droogs, and the Droogs, uh, right. and like Jude McKenzie right. played the main one, which was in the movie. The character's name is Alex DeLarge, played by Malcolm McDowell, uh, and he's got like three little henchmen. So they're this little group, and they right. all wear the same outfits, and uh, and they got pretty over on on the shows. For, they were for right. being a movie from the fucking like early 70s or late 60s it wasn't right, a very right. like re- cur- current culture kind of thing but a lot we had people <laughs> right. by the end of our stretch that would come and watch this re- these wrestling shows every convention that uh started coming dressed as those characters right. because there was and, fans of them from the wrestling and not only that what a weird feud right the droogs versus super mario like who would have ever like, right, put right. those two together right right so we decided that we were going to do this steel horsing. Uh, I, I think I wrestled them first, whatever. We had our match, and I stiffed him. Uh, it was all, you know, all, obviously all, all predetermined in front of the real, right. the real thing. And then we filmed, uh, which I think was one of the best skits ever. Yeah. In the back room where... In the dressing room, where the, yes. Right, the droogs called the police on Super Mario for stiffing them. Right. And I get arrested... For steel horsing, as we called it, uh, the droogs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's it's hilarious. Uh, and 
There it is. I think I'll grab the video and right. and add it to the end of the YouTube uh, uh, upload of this podcast. Okay. So that yeah. if someone wants to see it, they could go. Or or maybe I'll add it. Uh, maybe on the social media, like uh, in Instagram or something, I'll put it up. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's yeah. hilarious. It's it's like them on the phone, all four of them, uh, yeah. calling the police, and the the our 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 friend uh, Nikita, uh, was that her name? Uh, comes over. Oh, she's that, like that was that was her name. Uh, she was like trying to interview you guys and you're, you're calling the police and then all of a sudden yeah. the security comes in and you, they, they literally all four of them point your way and the guys yeah. walk over, cuff you and drag you out as you're like going, no, it's a me Mario. No stiff. Yeah. No stiff. <laughs> yeah. and someone yells, yeah. someone yells from the cra- from the, uh, from the locker room. You don't mess with the steel horse or you don't fuck with the steel yeah. horse. <laughs> yeah. and, and that was, yeah. I, it, it got off. I mean, that was a huge hit that weekend. We yeah. posted that. I mean, at, everybody lost it they were like holy shit yeah because it was like such a it was such a big deal and here we are making fun of it right and we and we struck while the iron's hot you know like right, it was right. literally like day or two you know yeah. of you know so yeah yeah that was uh, that was good well and, you know you're talking about stiff and wrestling and and uh i i gotta tell the story because i you know and these are these are the stories that i should tell and i i never really tell but when I first started wrestling in uh, 1999, uh, I was training uh, down in Rusty Brooks School of Hard Knocks in, in Hollywood. I guess it's Hollywood, Florida, sure. in his backyard. He had a ring in his backyard. Rusty Brooks was like, he had wrestled Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, on national television. Andre, like, I think. I think right, he had, yeah. yeah, right, Andre, yeah. So, it was, I mean, he was, a, he was what they call a jobber. He never won, but... The guy was on national TV fighting Hulk Hogan. Like, it doesn't get any cooler than that. Right. Like, to, to this day, right. you could pull up a video on YouTube of him wrestling right. all these huge names. So that's right. That's so, a, quite an accomplishment. Quite. So he was he was my trainer. And when I got to the school, and I'm, I'm 18 years old. I'm a young kid. I, I was skinny at the time, not fat like I am now. <laughs> and I, uh, I got to the school, and there was a guy. His name was Dave Johnson. And his gimmick was the Blackheart. Yeah. I mean, anybody with the name the Blackheart is a fucking asshole, right? I knew. So, it's funny because I knew one of the other Blackhearts. I didn't right. know he uh, was a. You bl- knew Nash, right? Yeah, Junior Nash. I didn't yeah. know he he was a Blackheart at the time, but he yeah. was like a regular when I worked at the comic book store late uh, mid. Tom. Uh, Tom Nash. Tom Nash. Yeah. yeah in the right. in the nineties. Uh, and he would come and buy comics from me every week, and we would shit talk. And right. he mentioned he wrestled, and that he would disappear for four weeks, and he'd be in Japan working, and then he'd come back. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They were working yeah. all over. Yeah. Right. So the other black heart was Dave Johnson. Now, Dave was he was a a solid. I mean, he was probably two hundred and thirty pounds. He was uh, probably about my height, maybe a little taller. He was just a. He didn't like work out, but he was solid. Like he was a solid dude, and he was a pot smoking. Like probably did other drugs. He was a he was a fucking asshole, like a fucking asshole. And <laughs> the first like once I started getting to training, he like I, like I didn't understand it at the time. I understand it now. But so he like when I was ready to like start practicing matches, he would always be like, "It's me and you," and I. I I was like, oh, fuck, like, this guy's a dick. Like, I see how he is to everybody. So the first time we ever, we, I ever trained with him, 18 years old, young as shit, he, he beat the fuck out of me. Like, literally beat me up. Like, beat me up, like, for real, as if we were – and in my head, I'm like, this guy's beating me up. Like, he's – like, we're, I, I, I'm not even fighting back. He's just kicking my ass, right. like, like, bad. And, like, and, it, like there, people think, like, you're talking, like – uh, kind of no, like really beat you up. Really, not like really, yeah. he really beat me up. He really beat me up, right? And I was so young, and I didn't know what like what was going on. I just I let it happen because I I didn't understand it, but I also knew I understood wrestling enough that I knew I didn't talk back because he was an elder. You know, he was the veteran, and if I opened my mouth, I would be done. Like my my career would be over before it started. So I kept my mouth shut, and this went on. I mean, we practiced uh, two to three days a week, and every time he would just pick me, and I'm like, fuck. And <laughs> I, I, like, he would just, like, and it's funny because he would, in wrestling, you, you talk about the match beforehand. Well, after we talked about it the first two times, 
the third time I got there, you know, we there and he said, and it was turned to like scrimmage. They call it. He would go, all right, let's do the same thing we did, you know, Tuesday. And I'm like, Jesus. And for, I mean, six months, we never changed what we did. It was literally the same exact match and he would just beat me up. Now there was times he would let me get a move or two on him and like, but it was the same, the same thing for six months. And the match never changed for six months. It was the same match, the same spots as they call it. Right. But he would beat me up, beat me up. One time, he kicked me in the back. I was sitting down on my ass, my legs out in front of me, and he kicked me in the back. He kicked me so hard, my legs went numb and my dick hurt. When I tell you my dick hurt, like I talking about it, I can remember it. He the kick was so hard, my both my legs went numb and my actual I think I lost you. I was like trying to hold back tears because he kicked I've hey. never kicked so hard in my life. You're and you're, I couldn't hey. breathe. Hey. And then we like finished the match and I couldn't like I couldn't walk, couldn't breathe. And I, the pain was so bad in my dick, uh, I was peeing blood. Like, he killed, kicked blood out of me. And I'm like, this is awful. Like, I don't ever want to come back. Well, on Saturday, when I came back, his car was there. I sat in my car for 20 minutes going, you should just turn around and go home. Fuck this guy. He's a piece of shit. Just turn around and go home. He's a fucking asshole. He's going to hurt you. And I was like, no, don't be a pussy. Go, go, go. Um, well, a couple months go by, and I start to – I met Billy Fives at that point. So Billy, you know, being the wrestling father he was, uh, he started teaching me some stuff. So one day we get in there, and I'm with, with the black heart, Dave Johnson, and we go to do the spot, and there was a spot where, like, he wanted me to punch him in the corner a couple times, and then we, like, reversed it, blah, blah, blah. We go in, and I just punched him in the face. I just fucking hit him full speed. Like, nothing to it. Am I talking to myself this whole time? Uh, your your headphones aren't connected, so we hear you, but I don't think you can hear me. No, did you hear? Me? You heard me a little bit. Yeah, yeah, enough to enough to not have to ask you to redo it, but yeah. Okay. Anyway, so except, I get except for you did walk away from the phone and come back, so you it, it tapered off. But we we got it, we got it. Don't worry. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I Billy, I was saying Billy taught me to to like man up as the time went on when I met Billy. And I got in there one day with Dave Johnson, and the spot was go. I remember the spot to this day. Go to the corner. I'm gonna punch him, punch him, punch him. I go to shoot him into the turnbuckle, uh, and then he reverses it. Uh, I go up and over him, like I kind of jump over him, but then he like kicks me in my dick. Like that was his thing, right? <laughs> Kicking in the dick. So, you know, I just got done pissing blood, and my back hurts, and all this. It's a couple weeks later. We get in the corner. And I don't know what got into me, but I just punched him right in the face. I literally just punched him. And then I punched him again and again and again and again. <laughs> and then we went to go do the dick spot, and he didn't kick me hard. And I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> like, he, he didn't kick me hard. And then we finished the match, and I hit him really hard a couple more times, and we're done. And he goes, hey, I'm done with him. And Rusty's like, what do you mean you're done with him? And he's like, he's good. I'm done with him. Um, he'd been waiting for good. you he'd been waiting for you to understand he's waiting for me to take a fucking stand yeah he literally was gonna kick my ass till i did and uh or until you left right right and i wasn't leaving because i loved wrestling and i just you know i just learned a bit you know from billy and and to stand up for yourself and i did and he he stopped it literally like the next practice he was like, it was time for the matches. I was like, we're going to go again. He's like, no, I, I'm done with you. <laughs> I was like, oh. And he picked somebody else to pick on. And uh, So, the, I mean, you know, I mean, he may be a dick, but there was definitely a method right. that working there. It You did have a, a long learning curve there of six months. But <laughs> right, right. And, and, and then we started wrestling him and Hack Myers on, in matches. Like, all, all we wrestled them in Tampa one night and then Fort Lauderdale the next and – like we were wrestling them too, and and Hack Myers was a super nice guy, but you know just another wrestler, drug addict, you know, was in ECW, and super nice. But they, Dave, never in the matches hurt us after that. Like he took. I remember a couple of times where there was like some spot where he had to hit us with a chair, and he was like gentle with it enough, but enough where it still looked real. 
And then I'd see him hit somebody else, and the chair would literally, like, <laughs> go through their head, and they have, like, a fucking egg <laughs> on the top of their head. And I'm like, and and he never, yeah, so, and, and God rest his soul and hack, they both passed away recently, uh, within the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, I, after that rough six months, he was an asshole. He was, but I'll tell you, he, he always liked me after that. He never gave me shit. He was always respectful to me. He always put me over. Yeah. Always made sure, like you know, he. Oh, and Hack was the same way. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I I do have a funny Hack story though. Like I feel like I have to tell it now. And Dave was involved too. So, we take a limousine from Fort Lauderdale. I don't know if I've ever told you this story at all. I, I don't. I don't. I don't remember a limousine story. So. So it's a limousine, and it's me. Uh, Eric is with me. Uh, York, Christian York, Joey Matthews, and Alexis Lurie, I think, uh, Mitch, Mickey James, and Bobby Rogers. We take a limo from Fort Lauderdale to Tampa for a show, but we're going to turn around and go right back. So when we get there, Hack's like, I need a ride back. So we're like, cool, where's Dave? And he's like, well, Dave drove his own car, but he's stopping halfway. He's not going to drive home all the way. He's going to get a hotel. So we get in the, in the limo. And we're going to depart back. We already went. We wrestled. We were going to depart. We wrestled Hack and Dave that night. Uh, we won the tag team titles from them in Tampa and IPW. And then uh, we're going to head back. So we're, we're driving back, and Hack is, like, out of his mind. He had taken some GHB, uh, and he's out of his fucking mind. But out of his mind to the point where it's getting uncomfortable, and everybody in there is getting uncomfortable. Uh, so... Bobby's starting to like panic because this ride is just the, the limo driver's getting pissed. He's like throwing shit. He's like screaming. And so Bobby calls Dave and says, where are you? He says, I'm at a hotel. We stopped and threw him out of the, out of the, we <laughs> threw Hackmeyer out of the, we tricked him because he's like, I'm not getting out. And we had to trick him. And Dave, we're like, it was like trying to get like like an animal out of somewhere. We had like cheese, you know, like we were yeah, like, like, a, on, right? like a trail of Reese's right. Pieces or something. <laughs> right. So he finally gets out. We get him out. But the limo driver, the moron, has the door open. And he's like trying to, well, Hack gets out and runs into the driver's seat of the limo. Oh, my God. Right. Now we're like, oh, shit. And Dave, the black heart's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, you know. So they finally get him out, and he gets him, and he brings him in, and like he gets him settled, and Dave comes back out. He's like, "Yeah, he's asleep." It like it was like putting a he had to put a baby to sleep. Yeah. It was the weirdest thing, and he's like, "He's asleep. You guys can go now." And then we went on our way back to Fort Lauderdale. Um, that was the weekend of the big show, uh, King of Carnage. Oh, the Davy, right. yeah, right. right. So wow, uh, we wrestled Christian York and Joey Matthews that that next night. Yeah. So. Right, but that was uh, those are some wild times, man. Those are the stories I probably I can tell some of those stories. Some I, mean, I can't tell. I mean, you pick and choose. I mean, obviously, uh, Dave and Hag are both no longer with us, so there's right, no so. no one's gonna come and beat your ass or sue you over right. that one. <laughs> right, right, right. I think we're safe. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I know we I like we've said before. We have a couple people that we have uh, in our back pocket waiting uh, for their right. expiration date to uh, oh, come up. We so have we stories. Can... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, break the internet with some of those. Yeah, I think so. But they're gonna yeah. be good. Oh shit! Right. Yeah. So it was funny because so, when we you brought brought up the Blackhearts and I mentioned Tom Nash, uh, his uh, yeah. his partner. Uh, it was funny because I, I you know I uh, he was a customer of mine, and then right. uh, like years later, I just found him on Facebook and I friended him, and you know you know it was like a cat, you know one of those friends that like you see their stuff, you like some stuff, but you really don't chat with them that often or anything like that. But he was so like right wing uh, conservative. I think I made a joke about something and it like I'll joke about both sides. It doesn't even right, matter right. where I am. I'll just just like, a you know, if I'll poke fun at anyone and and fair's fair. But I think I poked fun at something that was happening that that just was like not cool because like the next day he unfriended me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, shit, man. The, you know, the, you're you're going from me over that after all the hours of conversations at the comic book store about Conan and wrestling and whatever. It's like, all right, dude, cool. You know, whatever. You wow. Know, you know, yeah. Yeah. I was like, whatever. He's right. still around over there somewhere. Yeah. I just remember so he, had, I he had just had one of those big, flat, broken noses, and uh, 
Yeah. You know, when he talked, he was he all, was a bad motherfucker. He, yeah. He and he was big. I mean, like, what was he like? Right. Six, six four, five, something like that. Yeah. They they were both bad motherfuckers. Yeah. They were bad, bad dudes, man. Like, and that's the thing. Like, to get your ass beat by a guy. Like, here's the other part to it. <laughs> I probably should add this in. Not only did he beat my ass and everything, his he had shirts that he sold. The black heart. His shirts that he sold was like a Japanese symbol that I guess meant black heart. On the back was a like a DC number, right? Like DC hashtag something, something like a number, right? You know what I'm talking about? What do you I mean know? by DC? Like it literally said oh, Department DC. of Corrections, maybe. Right. Oh. oh. <laughs> and it had a number, and then underneath it had it had the description of like aggravated battery and assault. Well, I just thought it was a cool shirt. I used to wear the shirt all the time. I still have the shirt. That's cool. Well, one day Bobby's like, you you do understand the shirt, right? And I'm like, no, what? He's like, that's literally his real dis- <laughs> corrections number, and that's really the charge he had. I was like, oh, no wonder. That guy's a fucking psycho. That's like, funny. He, like, yeah. I mean, right. you could, I still have it. That's funny. You could make like, it'd be almost like, instead of like a band sh- tour shirt where it has all the dates and cities, right. it could be all the fucking charges on your rap sheet. <laughs> It's pretty, pretty. I mean, I thought it was a brilliant shirt once I knew what it really meant. Right. But I still wear it. You know. Yeah. Not a bad shirt. No, it's cool. It's a good idea. We should, uh, we should make a Breakfast Club one. That it's like next year when we do our world tour, all the fucking places we hit, we'll put them on the back yeah. of the shirt, like a like a band tour. Yeah, it's a good idea. You know, all the Sipping Sisters and whatever else, wherever else we go, that fucking place with right. the lasagnas in in Chicago and, uh, you know. Wherever else, I don't remember all the places we did. I already uh, kind of talked about going, but uh, we should right, just, right. just list them all on the back of a T-shirt and make a world tour, uh, twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two. Whenever, whenever, I don't know. whenever we're let out, right? When, uh, you know, the new guy. I don't know what the mask laws are yet, so let's find out. Well, well, he made a mask law, and then I, I just seen he wasn't wearing his mask, so he already got shit for that. I don't think he knew his own law yet. Uh, yeah, I don't know uh, where he was when he wasn't wearing the mask. But I don't listen, know. it does. He was in a federal building. But uh, here's the thing. Yeah, there's one guy that that owned yesterday. There's a guy like you can forget about the presidential inauguration because there's one guy who's owning the internet today. Oh, and fucking that's Bernie. Bernie Sanders. Fucking Bernie. Right. I like he's he looks very cute, like a little cute old man, but he also looks really angry in that. <laughs> like I don't know if he's mad or if he's. He is doesn't like that photo is so on brand for Bernie Sanders. Like, right. Like whether you like him or you don't, or you like his politics or you don't, you cannot argue that that guy has been that guy for his whole life. Like his politics right. have never changed. What he's for, what he's against have been for 40 years have been consistently exactly right. the same. And, and the same thing, like, Oh, I don't, you know, I I'm here for this thing. But it's cold outside. I'm not going. Right. I'm not going for flashy. I'm going for practical. And he was wearing right, right. like very smart. He right. was wearing the same jacket that was in those videos that you would see online. Going, I'm here to ask you again for money. You know, it was the right. same fucking jacket. And uh, yeah. and the the, the mittens gloves. I think the were mittens. like the, they weren't even fingers. They were mittens. Like he was going to take <laughs> something hot out of the oven. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was made out of like recycled sweaters from, and some right. kid made it for him. And it, it was, was like crocheted. Like, yeah. Right. And it was like lined with hot water bottle stuff. And I'm like, yeah. this is like, this is so Bernie that he would, and like, like some of the memes said, it just looked like I'm here, but I don't want to be here. You know what I mean? Right. It did look like that, though. It really did. It looked like like that. Like he was, he had to be there, but he really would rather be home. Like, you know? But the amazing thing is, like, that meme. It like it like not only could it imply that you could write that right. kind of stuff and make those jokes like checklist, uh, you know, uh, uh, go check the mail. Number two, Joe's thing, you know, like minimize yeah. it, and then three, yeah. and then three, like uh, g- grab grab the early bird at Chinese food, right. you know. Right. <laughs> uh, or you could, or what a lot of people did was they cut him out and put him in a thousand scenarios it's fantastic like because he's so sitting my a, favorite the golden girls one he's sitting with the golden girls <laughs> there's i can't pick one to be honest with you i mean yeah. from sitting on the brazzers couch to sitting oh that was amazing yeah. to sitting outside with the sopranos in front of the meat the the right you know the, <laughs> i mean there's a thousand of them there's like 
I, and, and then I saw, and they're all brilliant. Like there right. are, there's well, very few that are thing, like this. Is, you know, he's at the Last Supper. He's, I mean, it's but amazing. people are taking it to the next level. I was on Facebook, and one of my old neighbors from where I live in Charlotte, she's a Bernie fan. She cut him out and put him. It looks like he's sitting in front of their house in the lawn. <laughs> It's, I'm like, she's like, Bernie came by to visit. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, this is endless. Uh, like, you can do with this. It's fantastic. Uh, I right. I was telling you today. I mean, we need to see the longevity of it. But right. uh, but in this short time, it's been so brilliant. And there have been so many. Like, you know, you could make a meme. And so many of them fall flat. There's only two or three right. in that iteration that are funny. Almost every single one I've seen has made Everyone. me laugh. Right. And so I'm starting to say this might already in its very short time of existence be sneaking up into that level of like the Django Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio one. You right. Know, you know, that yes. level of, of like and it and like there's like that one's got longevity. This one has been out like what a day? It's been out right. like forty eight hours. It's a monster. This one's a beast. Uh, and and yeah. to top it off, I don't know who sent it last night, but I know it was one of you. Did somebody put him as the guy with the big long black shirt? Yes, <laughs> that's fucking brilliant. Uh, it was like it was like the the Barry Wood body with the big long right. snake dick, and uh, and they put the mittens on him. Yeah, and, and then Bernie's head. Bernie's head with the mask on. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. And they kind of blended all the skin tones to like match everything. They darkened Bernie and right. lightened the body of the guy. <laughs> so fucking funny. Yeah, there's going to be a thousand of them. It's so funny. Right. Uh, like I yeah. said, I said before uh, when we started, I was watching the news. Uh, one of the guys closed his hour. You know, he's got an hour show. He closed his hour show sharing Ber Bernie memes, you know. So, uh, oh, wow. know, it's, it's over as fuck. It's like, uh, yeah, you're right. He was the star of yesterday. I loved it. He was. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. What else you got today, man? I, I, I got, I got a little bit of information, a little bit of, I, I feel like I have to tell you this. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll finish my stuff. Then we go to you. Uh, I, I remember that I called, I was like feeling off today and I was like, I didn't have any food in the house. And I, I called you, and you gave me the button, and then you messaged me and said, "I'm on a, like a conference call, call you back." And I, I replied, uh, "What did I say?" I said, "Oh, uh, it, it, no big deal. I was just calling because I was thinking of having a pizza today." <laughs> that is what you said. And you said that you just laughed out loud during your meeting reading it. <laughs> I on a zoo, like oh, they can see me, and I read it, and I literally laughed out loud. <laughs> That, I did. that made it so rewarding that like I right. like I was kind of fucking with you. I wasn't I wasn't really going to get a pizza, but I didn't have anything to eat. So it was going to be back to my wing rotation of like, you know, here's my my order for the next two days. But uh, then after I messaged you, it was yeah. in my brain and then I had to fight not to um, actually do it. So then I compromised and got the keto pizza from uh, Blaze Pizza. Uh, right. But now I now I have to do I do have to fess up. I ordered two. <laughs> you fat, fat. Well, they're they're only they're only eleven inch pizzas. Okay, so let's let's first of all let's call a spade a spade. That's a personal pizza. Like you're supposed okay. to eat the whole thing. It's like the size of like a DiGiorno, except except flatter. It's not even that much volume. So what I did was I got two. I got very different ones. Ate half of one, ate half the other, and saved it so I have another whole pizza tomorrow and it's half and half again that's kind of brilliant yeah you know i i've been like you know i've been kind of playing jazz in my own tight little restriction diet restriction here and uh you know whatever <laughs> playing jazz <laughs> oh, oh, no, I got the, whatever i'm just fucking i'm just full of shit these days but yeah that was uh I, the battle is gonna be not eating more of it before tomorrow well I weighed myself this morning, pal. Oh, so uh, did we have a check-in, or are we still at the initial weight? I don't think we've had a check-in. What was the original weight? Let's just revisit that. 259. 259. A, that was on Tuesday, right? A generous, red-sweatered Fat Albert 259. Right. That was on Right. That was on the 12th, right? Uh, sure. That was on the 12th. That's when we did it. Sure. So, so nine days later. 
a cool 243 this morning, baby. 243. So and I have not worked out. Mm -hmm. I have not done a piece of cardio. This is strictly <laughs> no carbs. Well, that reminds me of something. So you're down 16 pounds? Right. In nine fucking days? That's right. Suck it. See, this is why. Jesus Christ. I'm lucky you only beat me by one pound in that thing. So, so it's funny. Uh, before, when, after I talked to you and I meant, and then I'm sitting there and I go to my room and I go, I, I, I'm thinking about getting a pizza today. And he's like, well, what's stopping you? I said, I don't know. I think I have to hop on the scale and see where I'm at, you know? And then, so I go and I weigh myself and, and he's like, well, what's the, what's the progress? And I said, well, it's a, uh, it's goodish. And he's like, what does that mean? I go, well, you know, I didn't weigh myself first thing in the morning but you know, peeing and without drinking anything, I've had I've had like a gallon of water already today and whatever. So so I guess I'm pretty good, and uh, you know, and then so I decided to get the pizza. <sighs> that's that's my thought process. On that. I mean, is that like how you're rationalizing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yourself? This is this is how fucking crazy I am. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, oh, well, oh, the other half of it was I go, yeah, I'm I'm kind of like where I am. I'm I'm down like a pound, but I haven't lost a lot of weight lately. <laughs> he goes, that's cuz all you do is sit there. <laughs> <laughs> I almost forgot the punch of that story. <laughs> I got I got lost in the details. Yeah, he's like all you do is sit there. I'm like, well, in fairness, I'm like I'm like doing stock an analysis and emails and things like that. He's he just looked at me. I go, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> stock analysis as, as if that's like. No, no, no. I understand that's still not. Uh, that's still not actually doing any movement. But it's not me just sitting there. You know what I mean? Like. Right. I told well, you my brother's story of the chronic inactivity. No. <laughs> The chronic inactivity. Yes. He uh he was that this was during one of his like fat lazy eat a lot periods. <laughs> and he had like a five day weekend where all he literally did was like watch watch shows on TV in his bed and eat. Mm -hmm. And uh and he was like he was in his bed and his bed was like against the wall. So he's like kind of like in this like side position where he's got one leg kind of up you know so his knees up in the air but it's against the wall you know i don't know if you can picture that but, right i understand well yeah but so all of a sudden a uh a light bulb in his fan break pops or something and scares the shit out of him and he literally like pulls something because he jumps because he's just been <laughs> sitting there and he's has his, he's barely moved nothing's lubricated or, or limbered or stretched or anything he jumps and this sudden quick movement like pulls something and he's like fucked up <laughs> for like a day and a half like really fucked up he goes to the doctor and the doctor literally accuses him like he like he gets my brother to fess up to like everything and he's like, he just accused my, he diagnosed it as chronic inactivity. <laughs> That's not even a real <laughs> diagnosis. No, it was a, like, I mean, obviously not, but those are, those, he used medical, like, oh uh, like God. words to say you're a fucking lazy piece of shit. You lazy fat fuck. <laughs> Jesus. God. Well, I mean, I, I think I've been through those periods of time. <laughs> we all have, buddy. Inactivity. We have. Right. Well, I got one more story to end it. I think we're we're about thirty minute mark here, so I got one more story. <laughs> one more. So, I got a book in the mail mm -hmm. from our friend Paulo, who who messaged me today, accusing right. me of having a smelly couch because I don't wear underwear, and I'm like, bitch, I still wear fucking shorts. <laughs> it's like, it's like I like that she did that. You I, know, she's listening. Well, two, two, yeah. Well, two things. She goes, she goes. Well, if I ever came over to your house, remind me not to sit on your couch because I'll smell your ass and balls. And I'm like, first of all, what do you, what do you sit down face first? How are you smelling anything? <laughs> I'm like, you ain't smelling shit unless you're sitting on your own face. And then two, I'm wearing, uh, I'm wearing shorts. It's not like I'm bare assed and free balling, you know, zero layers on the couch. And she like accused me of having saggy balls that stick out the bottom of the shorts. This is great. <laughs> and I was like, no, I've got, I may be old, but I have young balls. They're high and tight. And that, that ended the conversation. 
<laughs> that was the end of it. End of it. <laughs> well, she gets me a little gift. Yeah, I know this gift. I love this gift. Right. So I, I opened it up, and uh, most people who – anybody who follows me on TikTok would know. But uh, I opened the gift, and it, the gift is – it's a book called uh, Pokey Dicky <laughs> is the name of the book. And the book has a hole right through the middle of the book. <laughs> And on the front is a pair of underwear. <laughs> so just imagine, right? The hole, you're supposed to put your dick through the hole <laughs> right. on the book. Well, I start turning through the pages, and the first page is a monkey holding a banana, and the hole is where the banana is. So when you <laughs> stick your dick through the book, it looks like a banana, right? <laughs> the next one's like a fireman holding a fire hose. There's a, one of like a sea serpent. <laughs> There's... Right, and th there's one of a guy holding a hot dog bun, so your dick would be the hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Right, and then the last one is a muscle guy, like a muscular guy, and your dick would be his dick, but he's like a real big muscular guy, and it, you're supposed to put a picture of your face where his <laughs> face is. It says your face here. So a uh, couple things about this book. One, I, I posted a video on TikTok. Uh the amount of women that want me to read this book to them is insane. I never knew that women <laughs> wanted me to read a book to them. Well, they uh, want you to. One. They want you to right. read it live, like FaceTimed with your right. dick through the hole. Let's. Right. I mean, insane. Right. Insane. Two, uh, funny book. I mean, probably the funniest gift I've ever gotten. Uh, well played, Paulo. Well done. Um, three. I'm not gonna lie. A little bit of me wants to try this book. <laughs> <laughs> I would have I would have stuck my dick to it. Uh, right, I, like I feel like I have to at this point. I, I'm almost convinced she wants you to uh, uh, complete the final page and send it to her. I, I don't know if that's what she wants, but she I wants mean, a picture of 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 your dick through the hole with a little. You could like goop. You should just put you're about your, to piss her off. Just, just stick your driver's license <laughs> where the face goes on the. <laughs> well, here's the thing. After all the messages of you, you animal women wanting to see me read this book to you, <laughs> my first thought was, man, I'd make a killing on an OnlyFans page tonight. <laughs> you would. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, whatever. They can't so, be trusted. You're, you're, no. You're, yeah, they can't be trusted. No. Yeah. When so, I when I but, do my OnlyFans, it's going to be anonymous. You're never going to see my my uh, face and dick in the same picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. But anyway, yeah, that was a funny gift. Very very funny gift. Um, I, I did get two other gifts this week. This week, here. I got two more, and then we can end the podcast because I'm hungry and I want to make a cheeseburger. Uh, no bread. I got coffee. Right from our good friends at the Bad Bones Coffee Company in Cape Coral, uh, but it was sent to me by by Holly in the UK, and I know Holly listens. Uh, but the other gift she sent me was a spoon engraved, and it says AJ's Ice Cream Shovel on the spoon, and uh, it's a silver spoon with yeah that I can eat my ice cream with engraved. It would be pretty badass gift. That's really cool. It would be. I, and I'm not, I'm not criticizing the gift at all. It would be even funnier if instead of like the end of it was a spoon, it was shaped like a shovel. Like well, a, it's a, like it's a, not really. It's a huge, like, it's basically a shovel because that's the size. Of this, like it's a not serving like a spoon? normal size. Like spoon, a serving right, spoon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Or so, like a big soup spoon or something. Right. It's a giant spoon. So uh, I did buy keto ice cream tonight. Here we go. I here we go. Will be, Already, uh, Mister. Here we go. Here we I'm go. I'm down sixteen motherfucking Six, 16 pounds. Sixteen pounds. And so now you start with the shortcuts and the fucking cheats and the fucking the cheat codes and the fucking oh right. well you know oh. Yeah. Don't be a hater. I got I got a new flavor tonight. Yeah. Coconut almond swirl. I don't like coconut. I'll pass. Good. Well, good. You're not eating it. <laughs> That's true. So, my Publix. Is, I will be. My Publix is so bad. It never has any like no variety on anything. Because well, you have like a half a Publix. It's like so. a two thirds Publix, so it doesn't have right. like all the sizes and all the options of right, anything. Right. Yeah. It's probably best for you. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, so yeah, some good gifts this weekend. It's a solid, solid gifting, and yeah, I'm, you know, and, I'm, and now I'm like, I'm just curious if you're just giving shout outs to people, or if this is some subtle way to like uh, put in people's minds that they can send you stuff. <laughs> well, listen, you know me well enough. 
it's actually both. So, I do, I do, but uh, right. but I I have to call you out on it because it's fun. I'm, I'm doing the put over, but I'm also hoping people send me gifts that are not a book where I stick my penis through. <laughs> but uh, one's enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. But I'm about to make a nice two cheeseburgers here with little mushrooms. No bread. You're gonna wash those mushrooms. Well, I am now. <laughs> and uh, all right, you yeah, savage. That's, a, that's what's gonna happen tonight, disgust. right here. You just you disgust me. All right, you're not all right. you're not gonna wash those things. I know you. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>